I feel like I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> I'm gonna have some coffee. Hi guys. Today I am doing my February wrap up and March TBR. Um, typically I would do these in two separate videos, but I'm kind of late to the game. Um, my husband's been out of town and I need his computer to edit because my old computer does not recognize HD files. So I have not been able to film or edit in a couple weeks. So anyway, but he's back now so I can edit. So I'm gonna film it today and get it up today. <laughs> get it up. Um, this is not in the order in which I read it, but that doesn't really matter. Let's just start with Starflight by Melissa Landers. I read this in one day. Um, it was a very fast read, very action packed. If you don't know, it is about a girl, and I'm so bad at remembering names, so I'm going to peek really quick. Solara Brooks. So she is a convict who has her. Um, criminal record basically tattooed on her knuckles. So she is trying to escape to the outer realms where the government does not regulate that area so she can actually have a new life and start fresh where um, it doesn't really matter that she's a convict. So she indentures herself to her worst nemesis from high school to get to the outer realms but then she tricks him into becoming her servant um, and they go on this kind of like pirate spaceship which is really cool um, so this was a very I mean like at, in, at times very cliche young adult uh, romance but I really enjoyed it honestly like I'm gonna give it a three out of five stars um, because it's not the best book I will read and honestly it's it's pretty forgettable um, but it was fun it was a lot of fun it was kind of cutesy and romantic um, the love interests start off hating each other of course but then it you know they start to love each other and oh no there's one bed they have to share the bed oh my god like that kind of stuff so it's kind of cheesy romantic but it was very action-packed and i i enjoyed it i read you by carolyn kepnes um and this is a book about a stalker from the perspective of the stalker so it's really creepy and it kind of f's with your mind a little bit because as you're reading it you're kind of on his side and it feels so wrong you're like oh i hope he gets the girl <laughs> like but the the moral part of your brain is like why am i thinking this this is so wrong like he's stalking her and I don't know. So anyway, this girl walks into the bookshop where he works and he immediately is like, I want you. And so whenever he says you, he is referring to the woman that he is stalking, whose name is Beck, um, and his name is Joe. But, but it's kind of funny um, in a dark, humorous way. Um, and it's also kind of creepy because he's able to find her through all of these social media um, ways, you know, Twitter and Facebook, uh, her email. It's really creepy, but it's it's really cool, and it kind of was out of my comfort zone. And I gave it a four out of five stars. So I don't know if you kind of want something that's a little different from what you normally read, a little bit of a new adult thriller. Um, I highly recommend it. It's it's a trip. Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. Um, so this was an extremely hyped book. Um, I believe it was the first one I read in the month of February. It is about a young girl named Etta, who is a violinist, very good at it, um, and I'm going to sneeze. Thank you! Um, but then she finds out she, that she's actually a descendant of a long line of time travelers. So she time travels to all these different um, places and times, and it's very adventurous and pretty cool. Although I don't really think it was worth the hype, I have to say. Um, I don't remember what rating I gave it on Goodreads, but I mean, right now I'd probably give it like a three and a half out of five stars. It was fun, um, but it was just kind of fine. The romance was not... I just hit myself in the face. I'm sorry that I gave you a three and a half out of five stars, but you don't have to resort to violence. And oh, the one thing I really did like about it is there's a hidden Mickey, which excites me. So this is a Disney Hyperion um, published. So there's a hidden Mickey and I thought that was kind of fun. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I was 
um, trying to get out of a little mini reading slump when I picked up this book, um, which I'm really glad I picked up this one because it was a very fast read. It is a psychological thriller, which is what I thought it was going to be, a little bit of a murder mystery. Um, so there is a girl on the train. Her name is Rachel. She is an alcoholic, recently divorced. Divorced? It's a weird way of saying that word. She tries to insert herself into the mystery, but she's actually kind of wrapped up in it already. So it's it's really interesting. You've got kind of an unreliable narrator. You have three narrators, actually, because there's Rachel, there is Anna, who is the new wife of Rachel's ex-husband, and then you have the woman who went missing, whose name I can't remember, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It was really cool, really fast-paced. Um, I enjoyed the twist at the end. I did not expect it. So I gave this one a four out of five stars. Um, and yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Again, I'm not really... I don't typically pick up thrillers, psychological thrillers or murder mysteries or anything like that, so it's kind of fun to branch out um, and step out of my comfort zone. Next, I read Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. This is the third and final book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, which I've explained many times, but it's basically angels versus demons and um, the romance is of a forbidden nature. Uh, so... <laughs> This book, uh, kind of, I don't know, it took me a lot longer to read than I thought it would because at one point I knew something really terrible was going to happen, so I had to literally hide from the book because I just couldn't handle it. I, I knew that something was going to happen, but it was really intense um, and really fun, and then it kind of like exploded my brain at the end of it a little bit, so that was kind of cool. I liked how it ended. Um, I'd give it a four out of five stars. It was... It was fun. I would say a very, very good finale. All right, finally, I read, listened to The Martian by Andy Weir, um, and obviously I listened to this on audiobook. This is about Mark Watney, who gets stranded on Mars by his crewmates because they think he died. Um, and this was a lot of fun to listen to. I loved the narrator. Um, I listened to it on my way to work and back, and it was just a lot of fun. I know I already said that. This is a five out of five star book. I highly, highly, highly recommend it, um, and it was just really good. I don't know. There's not much I could say. Um, there's a lot of science-y stuff, but the way he explains it, it is easy to understand, so you don't feel lost. I stepped out of my comfort zone a lot this month, and I'm really excited about that. That was last month, not this month. Anyway, real quick, let's get into my March... <laughs> I'm dropping things. My March TBR. Um, okay, so I have already started three books. I'm in a little bit of a slump. I don't feel like reading at all, um, but I have to because I have to. Um, so yeah, I've started three books, one of which is Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Um, I have wanted to read some classics. If you saw my bookish resolutions, that is to read, I don't remember how many, but a certain amount of classics, and I haven't read any so far. So I started Twelfth Night. I figured a play would be good to start because it's, I don't know, short, I guess. Um, and Twelfth Night is one of Shakespeare's comedies. And I would say the best way to describe the plot of this book is to go watch She's the Man with Amanda Bynes, because that's kind of what's helping me um, to, to like connect the dots, you know? Because sometimes when you're not, you haven't read Shakespeare in a while, you're kind of like, what are they saying? <laughs> I also just started Spark Joy by Marie Kondo last night. So I read or listened to The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, but I really wanted to read the second one because it's basically for people who want more. They want to um, answer questions that the first book may have posed. So yeah, so I just started this and I really enjoy it so far. I also started The Love That Split the World by Emily Henry. This is kind of a magical realism book um, where the main character gets this vision, sort of, of the man or boy she's going to fall in love with and she has to save him or something. I'm only like 30-something pages into it and I haven't really gotten to the point where I like am excited about it, so I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, 
I'm just gonna throw in the Mime Order by Samantha Shannon into my March TBR. This is the second book in the Bone Season series. And the Bone Season, if you recall, I read in January and it was five out of five star book. I loved it so much and I've heard the Mime Order gets even better. So I'm really hoping this also pulls me out of my reading slump. Um, and it's just, it's going to be grand. So the Bone Season is about Paige Mahoney, who is a dreamwalker um, in a futuristic London where those kinds of powers, like clairvoyant powers, are actually outlawed. It's really, really good, um, and you all should read it. I feel like I don't hear enough about that series. It's amazing. It's incredible. You need to read it, and I'm going to read this, and I'm really sad because the third book was supposed to come out this year, but the publication has been pushed back to next year, but that's okay because it means it's going to be even better. So yeah, right now I just have the four on my TBR. I'm sure I'll read more, hopefully, once I get out of this little, like, kind of slump that I'm in right now. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like me. If you do, make sure to subscribe to my channel. That would make my little book. And uh, if you like Instagram with books or bookstagram, um, I have one. It is at Heather Forever Books, the same as my YouTube channel. I also have a Tumblr at Heather Forever Books, the same as my YouTube channel. Um, and if you want, you can follow me on Twitter where I post reading updates and other random stuff like sex dreams about Jimmy Fallon. And that is at Heather Warren underscore capital H capital W. So if you feel like doing any of those things, go ahead. I will also leave all that in the description box below. And I just got my dogs back from California. So I'm really excited about that. So if you like dogs, go ahead and follow me on Snapchat, Heather Joe 720. So that's a lot of information. Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.